tangerine. So that's what I'm going on tonight. I'm, I'm yeah, excited to, to be surprised. And it's about transgender sex workers. And we had to go watch this because I'm really intrigued because I've never watched a film off an iPhone before. There were many reasons why we decided to move forward and shoot this film on the iPhone. Um, but I have to say, it really stemmed from an organic place. It was the fact that we didn't have any money. And, I have, and I'm on my fifth feature film. I'm out of favors. So it was, you know, we could have shot on the DSLR or a camera such as the one you're shooting on. But we wanted to really separate ourselves from the pack and to make this a very unique looking film. I didn't realize all the benefits that were, that were going to come with the phone until I was actually in production. Um, the fact that we can shoot in even a, more of a clandestine style than I was used to shooting my previous films with. Also the intimidation factor for first time actors was removed from the first frame of shooting. And it was amazing to see Maya and Kiki, who were both first time actresses, um, have the same confidence level as James Ransom, who, you know, from The Wire and Generation Kill, and, and he's the seasoned actor. And to see them collaborating on the first day of shooting like they were all seasoned professionals was an amazing thing that I know it was because of uh, this small device. And I hope the audiences are entertained. I, I, you always hope that the audiences are just satisfied that they spent their time and money to come out. That's what that's. And that I'm not boring them. <laughs> There's this intersection in Los Angeles, um, Highland and Santa Monica, sort of an infamous intersection, an unofficial red light district that's in my neighborhood. So it's an area that I would always pass by. I was very interested in exploring. And uh, I knew that there had been, there were actually no films that have ever taken place there. And I just thought, from a location point of view, that was, I, that was something, that, it was a very cinematic corner. So basically I decided to jump right in and to have, I always have extensive research uh, periods before my film, before I make the film. So for about six to eight months we just, we just uh, got to know people in the area, introduced ourselves, um, told them that, uh, about this film that we were, we were hoping to make and looking for collaborators on it. So it was really, it was when I found my two collaborators, Maya Taylor and Kiki Katana Rodriguez, that we, 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 we sort of formed this film. This, this really shifted as the movie went on to being more, having a lot more depth and emotion than it sort of seemed in the beginning. In the beginning it seemed a little bit of a fluff movie, but it got really to a really good place. Um, I really like the performances of the main two characters and the taxi driver as well, Razmik, whatever his name is. I thought he was really good too. And just bringing those stories together at the end just worked really well. And I love... Uh, Katana Kiki Rodriguez are both first-time first actresses, um, but I just really hit the jackpot because I found these two actresses who were just not only incredibly, you know, um, uh, collaborative, but incredibly talented. Being the fact that the trans movement is so much in the zeitgeist right now, um, I think it's going to play very different than it would have a year ago, which is, which is a wonderful thing. I mean, I kind of take it with a grain of salt that everybody thinks everybody's open-minded, but I guess we can't assume that, really. Um, but I think the world has changed for the better. And that we're ready for stories about all sorts of colourful characters. So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. We had a scriptment, which is basically half a script, half a treatment. And sometimes it was extremely fleshed out. Like the way we'd have dialogue scripted out in your traditional way. Other times we had paragraphs that said, Alexandra and Cindy walk down Santa Monica Boulevard and talk about their favorite Christmas gifts and that was it. And then when we were there on the day, I would actually have them just improvise on those subjects. Um, but no matter what, even when we did write, Chris Bragash and I co-wrote the script, even when we did um, flesh out the dialogue, we would always give it to them and say, look, is this real? Does this read um, accurately? And if it doesn't, throw it out the window and put it in your own words. So there was always that encouragement to, to improvise and to take the written word and make it even more grounded and more real. The fact that it is made on iPhones and the fact that you can get such amazing, um, not effects, not, like, not special effects, but beautiful sound, beautiful pictures and performances out of something that we use every day, I think that will really 
intrigue people actually. So. I co-shot the film with Radium Chung and he is an amazing DP. He actually uh, would always try to enhance the natural lighting. So he, so yes, there was there, there wasn't uh, a huge lighting. There, <laughs> I got some good news to tell you about me and Chester. I know what it is. You're breaking up with him. Thank God. I'm gonna be cheating on you like that. Wait, 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 wait. what? Really relied mostly on natural light and we shot all around magic hour which is that sunset period in Los Angeles that's very pretty and very orange and that's where the title comes from that you know that tangerine feel but at night he did light and he uh, and as you can see he's just a master gaffer and he really uh, made he, he lit the film in such a way where you would never know it's lit. Yeah. Girl, calm the fuck down. It's not that serious. I will go with you under one condition. You must promise me that there's not going to be any drama. I promise. I promise. Look at me in my eyes and promise. I promise no drama, Alexandria. Whoa! What the fuck? Oh, boy. Help me, officer! You didn't have to Chris Brown the bitch. What did you do to her?